All right, today we're gonna to talk about what is Betaflight and who is Betaflight? And what does it mean when somebody says the Betaflight devs? Who does that mean? So first and foremost, Betaflight is a project name on GitHub. There's lots of projects on GitHub. GitHub is an open source repository for open source code for people to work together and collaborate as a community. There's lots of times people talk about open source projects like a company. They're not a company. They don't necessarily make money. Some projects can, of course, people contribute, things like that. But by and large, they don't have incorporation. They're not a physical entity like that. If they would become a company, their asset, if it's all engaged in the open source project, could be easily forked at any given time by anybody and, and taken and made another company. So it's it, it's just important to recognize that, you know, when you're looking at Betaflight, it's not KISS, it's not Flight One, it's not some other privately held company. So their motivations for things are totally different. As I'm sure most of you are aware, Betaflight is open source firmware to fly quadcopters. It's a community project, uh, just like iNav, just like Emu Flight. The people that contribute to that open source project come and go, generally. Uh, it depends who you can contribute. If you're watching this video right now and you know how to code something, you can go ahead and contribute something. You can do a, a fork of it, um, code something up, and then submit a pull request to have that, whatever you changed, pulled back into the master branch of the project. So in that sense, when people say the devs, they mean you too. If you contribute to Betaflight or iNav or Emu Flight or any open source and somebody says the devs, they mean you. And like with any open source project, you can go into the insights part of it, and then you can see contributors, and then you can see who is making the contributions to that project. You can see it over the lifespan. You can narrow down a range, and you can check out who's made the most contributions, when that is, and you can go all the way down here. So when people say the devs on any open source project, you know, what do they really mean by that? It's it's a lot of people. Look at all the devs on Betaflight. Some of the people are active. Some of the people are not. Some of the people are not active, then come active again. So it's, it's really a nebulous thing. In most of the scenarios, the people that contribute to a project are not necessarily the gatekeepers of it. Uh, think of it somewhat like a company. There's a lot of workers that work at certain companies, but it doesn't mean they have command decisions on what goes on. But they are the devs, the developers that contribute to it or the people that work for said company. So the difference is obviously the people that contribute in an open source aren't being paid, whereas uh, if you're working for a company, you are being paid. One other thing I wanted to touch on is that there's a lot of times that people will say, well, closed source, um, you know, people have more motivation because they're being paid to, to do the code. And that um, may be be the case that's an argument at least but that is not what i find you got to keep in mind that when it's open source anybody from the planet can contribute to this thing your uh, employee base is huge uh, if you want to say that your contribution base is huge uh, they're experts many times in these fields that they contribute in and when you're a closed source Although that person being paid, it's usually only one or three people at the helm, and they are not experts at a, a certain given topic. They, they're just the pool of uh, talent is not as high because you have to pay when you're closed source. You have to pay for that pool of talent. Whereas open source, it comes to you for free. And uh, so, in my experience, I would never pitch closed source against open source as, oh, clearly if you're being paid, it's better. It's like, no, 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 clearly you just wanna make money. And however you can do that, um, whether it's real and, and uh, or just hyped in marketing, it's, that's, you're just, your goal is to make money. Closed source, that financial goal is not really there. You're just doing it for the love of whatever the thing is you're contributing to it. Um, and you say, you know, a lot of times the passion is more important than, uh, than profit. So I just, I wouldn't go with the assumption that sometimes people do that, oh, closed source is better because people are getting paid to work on it. It's like, mm, 
but that talent pool you know costs money and it's not nearly as big as well now in the case of Betaflight and other open source projects they actually have a website the 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 project or the devs and we'll talk about a little bit more about the devs here in a little bit but there's an actual website for Betaflight that's just a kind of a landing page gives people the link to the repositories to the releases to the configurator uh, black box you can see the nightlies so on and so forth here so there's a nice little website that talks about Betaflight talks about what kind of the 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 project is about what's the what's the project's mission and then kind of resources and members and so on and so forth this website does have a members button here and as you saw before it's not all the people that contribute to Betaflight but it is the key members that are influential in the project and if you go down through here you can see Mike Keller Raphael Stefan Azure so on and so forth uh, Dan, uh, CTZ Snooze, you can see the whole uh, list of folks. And I would say, you know, my experience with Betaflight, these are your key individuals that are the most influential on the project. It does not mean necessarily they all have kind of ownership in the project, meaning key admin rights to that project on GitHub, but they are the influential members of the project, specifically for, for Betaflight in this case. Obviously other projects have other influential members and um, kind of set the direction and uh, what the project's going to accept in pull requests. Uh, obviously that sets the direction. You can code anything you want, but if they're not gonna accept it into the main code, then it's not gonna happen. So that will set the direction of where the project goes, what goes in, what goes out, how things change. So. You know, my best advice is when people say the devs, you mean these guys, I guess, because other people are contributing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they have influential over, over the entire project. Now, that being said as well, don't think that like all those uh, guys on that, that grouping there, like they all are just uniformly unanimous on everything. I'm sure they have different views and so, and so on and so forth, and they... Uh, communicate and talk and kind of shape the direction of where things go it's a thing in flux at all times so um, if you don't like one thing or another or you do like one thing this way direction or another obviously those are the key people to get that message to and then they can talk amongst uh, other other people involved uh, you know typically in the beta flight slack in this case so where do the devs hang out? I mean, all the devs, uh, whether you're the most influential ones or just anybody wanting to contribute code, uh, this is the Betaflight Slack. And again, if you go to betaflight.com, there's a link to how you can get onto the Slack. Slack is a software, it's basically text messaging. And uh, in there, it's used by a lot of open source private as well. It's its own private software uh, company, but it's just used, think of it like Facebook, but it's different or like Discord, but it's, a little bit better than Discord uh, because it has sub threads that you can use. You can see here's like a topic, for example, and they can have sub threads on that topic. So it's a way easier to follow in Discord. Uh, that's a huge uh, minus to me on Discord. So you will find all the lead devs in here, the most influential ones. You will find, you know, just everybody contributing on the project. There's different channels here. So if you're interested in contributing to Betaflight and want to get involved and want to make a difference, this is where you need to be. So yes, ultimately I am in here as well, working on it. You can see I'm in here just today, talking with some guys about some things. And ultimately, uh, you know, I have contributed code to the project uh, just in the form of uh, configurator changes, uh, tweaks in the configurator for the sliders and things like that. So very, very minor. Um, but does that make me a dev? I, I really don't consider that. I've done a lot of testing, a lot of feedback, a lot of trying to influence so kind of influence the influencers uh, of the project. So just providing testing and feedback and ideas is one way uh, to contribute to the project. You don't necessarily need to code. Obviously, uh, that backed with some coding experience is even better. And you know you can learn those things along the way if so desired. So what if you're in a position where you want to contribute to the project, but it's not necessarily your time, it's more financial? Well, back on the betaflight.com website, there's three ways. There's the PayPal, the Patreon, and then code development is another way to contribute, but that's kind of more of your time. So PayPal or Patreon are two different ways to contribute. And the primary thing that people want to know in that scenario is where does my money go? Well, honestly, uh, I contribute on Patreon on a monthly basis. And my best advice is don't worry about it. Uh, if you want to contribute, 
contribute to it. Uh, it goes to the website, the domain, uh, it goes to equipment supplies for people to do testing on things. It goes basically to the maintainers that are at the core of maintaining the project, which is not glamorous work. Uh, so it's a little funny. Yeah, I would guess, I don't really know, honestly. I would guess it's a little bit of a, a incentive uh, for some people uh, to some extent to do the work that I wouldn't want to do is maintaining the project code, reviewing PRs, bug fixes, all that kind of stuff. Most people that contribute that are not in the core circle are doing things that they want to do, betterments that they want to, and that in itself is their payment, something that they came up with that they can see actually gets used by hundreds of thousands of people in future versions of Betaflight, where you know the kind of the guys in the trenches have to review those PRs, um, process all that stuff, and do bug fixes and things like that. So, from my standpoint, which I would recommend the same is I just want to continue through the project. I don't really care where it goes. It's not my problem. Here's here's my contribution. Do whatever that I just want to contribute to the project. So I'd recommend that scenario. And if you're not, if you're like, well, I want to exactly know, then don't. Then don't contribute. That's that's my best advice. The other thing that I think comes up from time to time is, you know, how do I get involved? How do I become influential? From my experience, uh, coming from nowhere on it and being fairly influential, you know, whatever, it's it's all subjective. I, I've influenced some things and did some testing and helped out. Just like any volunteer organization, get involved and start doing something. Do whatever you like. Uh, start helping out if you want to be, you know, working on bug fixes. They would love help on that and PR requests and things of that nature. If you have a cool new feature you want to implement, go ahead and code it up and submit it. If you want to, if that's not your bailiwick and you just want to do get involved in testing and development and influential on that idea, well, then you want to head over to the Betaflight Slack and then jump into the development channel right here. And in here, uh, we'll put some information, you know, this is where stuff gets thrown out there when people are looking for testing and things of that nature. Uh, a lot of it is also just in the pull requests directly. So, uh, you know, if you're not seeing a lot of activity there, you can always go into the pull request uh, section here and people propose new ideas and concepts that oh, those always need to be tested and vetted. The Slack is nice for chit-chatting and some quick things, but the, the buck stops at the pull request stuff. You know, there needs to be support for the pull request. And if it's something that's new that needs vetted and testing, um, they're always looking for people to, you know, flash the firmware on it, go fly and see if it, you know, anything bad happens. Uh, typically, I've, I've never had an issue with anything uh, personally, and I've been doing this for three or four years now, I guess, uh, being active within the Betaflight project. But, you know, things need tested and that's a way to get on there, test it out, you know, th throw some data down on your experience system logging if, if it's something that can be logged and and uh, and that's the that's a great way to start to get involved. On the other side of that, if your intent is you're a coder and you want to get involved so you can make money, this this is not where you want to be at. It's going to be a long road to haul. You know, maybe you start working up through it and volunteering and all that stuff and maybe at some time you you know, uh, start doing enough things, you become an inf you know an influential member of the team. Get on that 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 thing on the website where the rolling scrolling pictures. You get on there. That's that's a positive step forward. And maybe eventually, if you're enough of a maintainer, you know, you can get into that that kind of that inner circle of of stuff. And maybe you know, there's something there. I, I'm not really sure. I'm not I'm not in the inner circle, but I would say that is not the that should not be your motivating goal. If that's your motivation, that's it's probably not the best thing. You could probably make money uh, easier on other things. So that was my best advice. It really should just be because you want to do it. You love doing it. You want to contribute. want to help out. You want to be a part of it. I can just use a personal example. You know, there's a park behind my house. You guys have seen it forever. I'm the chairman on that board, actually. I got involved in the park because I want to be. I do a lot of stuff for the park. I, to some extent, run it. And... Uh, I don't do it for money. I'm never looking for money. I never got onto it because I wanted it to be money. I just wanted to do it because it's a community asset. I want to get back to the community. I, I like being involved. I like doing the, the things that need to be done to run a park. And uh, it just fits in well with my engineering background and, and some of my history. I grew up on a, uh, on a farm, so it gets me an opportunity to do hands-on stuff. So I just like to do it. I would say the same thing kind of applies to beta flight. If it's something you just like to do. It's like doing YouTube videos. Don't start a YouTube channel unless you like to make YouTube videos because 
the money's not worth it. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to be liking to do it first. And then, yeah, you can make some, some money along the way. So that is it. Hopefully with this gave you a little bit more understanding of what is Betaflight and what does it mean by the devs uh, when people say that. I think a lot of times in my scenario, people say that as this big, broad statement and they think that there's meetings or something like consensus. There's not always just consensus around certain things. It's people just submitting stuff that they want to do. And, you know, it's like, well, this should be a different way. It's like, well, it was kind of the way that the the submitting person submitted it and you know it can be changed but you know it's always a conversation it's always a compromise it's not like there's this overlord uh necessarily making everything exactly the way they want it to be with that said there is a hierarchy of uh influential members like there's three top members that are administrators of the repository and then there's kind of the inner circle of uh developers that have been contributing for years that are trusted sources. And then there's a whole flock of people that just contribute casually with their time. Kind of like I contribute casually uh, with testing and influence, you know, discussions and things like that. And a little bit of coding here and there, but not too much. Okay. Well, that's enough yammering. Thanks everybody. And I hope this helped.